Today we're delving into the world of Georgian Bath. One of the most famous residents was of course Jane Austen, and her presence is felt to this day. At the Jane Austen Centre, we're enjoying a scrumptious cream tea, we're visiting the Roman Bath, a fantastic shop, a gin bar, and of course, we walk around to capture the breathtaking architecture for you. Good morning. Good morning. Now, this morning we're stepping into the world of Jane Austen because we're going to the Jane Austen Center. Yes, we will discover Regency Bath. Yes. Jane Austen lived in Bath from 1801 until 1806 and it's always so nice to be here. I think the last time we visited the Jane Austen Centre, how long ago? Six years? Yeah, I believe six years. It was lovely. So this is the original costume. Sally Hawkins played Anne Elliot in Persuasion. It's such a lovely film in case you haven't watched it. And I'm just realizing how short Sally Hawkins is. I'm just average size. I feel like a giant. Incredible. It's great that they have the costume here. Which one do you prefer? Who's the original? <laughs> yeah, he looks a little bit dishevelled, doesn't he? He does, yeah. All smiley. Good morning, Mr. Darcy. How are you? Hi. Not bad, not bad. Yeah. I'd like to do this all over again. Yeah. Like when we did the Jane Austen Festival. Now you're two yeah. We need some groceries and I need to write a shopping list. What do we need? I'm using a quilt as you do. Okay, because we are German, we write the shopping list in German. Knickerbrot. Bananen. So what are we having? The Lady Catherine's cream tea. I'm having the gluten-free. Yeah, because having the regular version. Then I'm going for the Jane Austen tea blend. What are you having? I'm having a Russian caravan. That's the one I can't deal with. Isn't that really strong? Yes, it's strong and smoky. Yes. I love it. <laughs> I really like the, the view from here. A lovely view into Gay Street. 
Are you hungry? Yes, I'm very hungry. How do you like the tea room? Very nice and cozy. And still very quiet, which is great. As always, I had to check what kind of china this is, the brand, and I don't know, it seems to be especially made for the Jane Austen Centre because it says Jane Austen Netherfield Collection. It's beautiful, isn't it? Really lovely. Let's try the Jane Austen blend. It smells nice. Very nice. Gluten free cream tea. So, two gluten free scones. And Yag was like, okay, why are yours so big? And mine, so he has the regular scones. Oh, that's small. Yeah, that's strange. <laughs> you should have gone for gluten free. <laughs> Usually it's the other way around, so. <laughs> This was our second time at the Jane Austen Centre and we really like it because it's a smaller and very intimate place. Yes, and the people are so nice. Yes. Mr Knightley, you know who you are. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah. It was amazing yes. to meet yes. you. <laughs> it was really a pleasure. Yes. And also, we mustn't forget, I was going to say afternoon tea. No, it was cream tea. Yeah. Lovely. Really lovely. So. The scones were really good. Yes. Now we're going to wander around a little bit. Now, in 1799, Jane Austen stayed here in this building, which is 13 Queen Square, for one month together with her mom before she moved here in 1801. When Jane Austen's dad died, she moved here with her mom and sister. This is 25 Gay Street, which is quite close to the Jane Austen Centre. So this is the house and the Jane Austen Centre is down the road about 100 metres from here. What's your favourite place, Jörg? Because we're now at the circus, which is so beautiful. It's yeah. my favourite part of Bath. Of part of Bath. To be honest, I don't know. Do you really don't know. Do you prefer the Royal Crescent over this? No, I think this is. Yeah. Special because it's a circle. Mm-hmm. Uh, the other one is just the Royal Crescent. is just imposing. It's it's like yeah. Uh, like wow, it's big and it's wow. That's it so looks, true. Yeah. Very posh. Yes, I mean this here looks very posh too. Yeah. But it's so beautiful. I, I think this looks a bit more elegant. I yeah. don't know. As you said, the the Royal Crescent is just wow, so big. So this time we're not staying in a hotel here in Bath, but in a little apartment here on Norfolk Crescent. And it's really good because it's only a five to 10 minute walk into the city center. As I mentioned outside, this time we're not staying at a hotel or a B&B because I stumbled upon this small apartment online and it was such an amazing deal. Also because there's currently this scaffolding outside and you don't have any view right now we said you know what 
that doesn't matter because we're walking around Bath all day long anyway and it's actually a great base because it's only a five minute walk so what could be better? Good morning! Good morning! I think you might be able to tell where we are this morning. If not, I'm gonna tell you. We're at the Roman Baths. Yes, it's Yak's first time here. I came here with my American friend. When I studied in Cambridge, I think it's coming up 23 years. It's crazy. It's yes. great to be back. Yes, and I always wanted to visit the Roman Baths. Yes, I mean, we, we went to Bath several times, but it's finally time to visit this place. Yes, because think about it, it's 2,000 years of history. Yes, well this is what gave Bath its name, the famous lab, it's a famous landmark. Yeah. And behind us, I think that's just iconic. So I think this here is just a famous picture. Yeah. Yeah. And just think about it, 2,000 years ago, mm -hmm. the Romans were dipping their toes into this water. Yes, it's great to be here, yeah. finally. This ground Roman bathing complex was constructed between 60 and 70 AD. The ruins were excavated during the Victorian era, when the public became more interested in Britain's heritage. Bath is the only place in the UK with natural warm springs, which is probably the reason why the Romans were attracted to it. Roman bath houses were not just places for leisure and relaxation, but also places for socializing and worship. So you can taste the water here from this spring and Jörg is going to do it. I heard that it doesn't taste really nice, so... It's warm. Yeah? Yes. Well, that's good. It tastes really old. <laughs> it tastes old. <laughs> Just like regular water? Yeah. Now this was really fascinating. I think seeing this old site, you just think how advanced it was. Yes, and we still do these kind of things today. Yeah? It's like a like a spa. You pay a lot of money for it nowadays. Yes, yeah, because we've got a sauna, you've got a pool, you get massages, yes. and even you can have something to eat. Yes, you can. Well, that's what they sh they showed. You could buy oysters, also something nowadays incredibly posh and expensive. Yeah. So you liked it? Yes, I liked it very much. Yeah. And so it's Saturday morning. What we can recommend is going first thing. We yeah. went there at nine o'clock and it was so quiet, really nice. Yeah, because now it's full. Yes, it gets really busy. You know what? We didn't have breakfast. So we're going to have breakfast somewhere. We, we didn't book anything. We'll just have a look. Yeah. So we came to a place that is almost just opposite the Roman baths. It's called Square. And here is having pancakes with nuts and honey. And this is avocado benedict with or on gluten-free toast. A 
Okay, we're now going into a shop called Belgelat, which I stumbled upon on YouTube. It's supposed to be really nice. It's in a Georgian building and was remodeled during the Victorian era by three eccentric Victorians. Let me show you the front. It's really beautiful. in love with these ceramic fruits and I think we're going to get one pair. Guys, just to let you know, this shop is absolutely, I know I keep saying it all the time, but it's absolutely stunning and so special. Look, this Looks like a Swedish clock, doesn't yeah. it? It's like a Mora clock. So I think the downstairs used to be for servants. That's what I read. How stunning. So it seems to be French. I love this. Such a special shop. We can't believe that we've we've never been in this street. We've always walked past it. Unbelievable. So this is the street where you find Baldulat? Yeah, Margaret's buildings. Yes, Margaret's buildings. Hope you can hear that. And it's got and, a lot of nice shops. Yeah, independent shops. And the funny thing is, so we walked past this street like a gazillion times and never visited this street. It's so beautiful. By the way, this is what we bought at the beautiful Baldulat store this gorgeous porcelain pair and it will live in our new kitchen once it's ready which will probably be the end of the year but we really fell in love with this and it's also a fantastic reminder of our visit to Bath. We are at the bar 
gin distillery because have a look here. You just have to. <laughs> so, well, this is a non alcoholic cosmopolitan, <laughs> and yours is a Negroni. Are you tipsy? Yeah. <laughs> the music in there was so loud. Was what was the name of your cocktail? Negroni. Negroni. Yeah. Which it's is gin with Campari and something else. Okay. Important thing is gin. Well, mine was the best because there was no <laughs> there was no alcohol in no, it. No alcoholic cosmopolitan. It was nice. It, it was nice. Very posh. I you have to come here. People in there are quite well. I think most of them are quite tipsy. No, I think. <laughs> you can even take gin tours, you can yeah. book them. It's a nice bar. Well, you know what? As always, we just leave the link for you down below in yeah. the info box. The sun is out now. Finally, because we had heavy rain all night and it didn't look good at all this morning. No, it feels like spring now. Yes, I think that's the first day actually that it, this year that it feels like this. So, Jane Austen lived here in this house from 1801 until 1805. This is number four Sydney place and she moved here with her family when her dad decided to retire. And, and just a few meters away from Jane Austen's former home, you find the Holborn Museum, which a lot of you might know from the series Bridgerton. This is the very first time that we're exploring the former homes of Jane Austen. We've been to Bath, I think, three or four times and we've never done that, so that's actually quite exciting. Next to me is another home where she lived and, well, let me show you first. This is 27 Green Park buildings where a short lease was taken after Jane's father died in 1805. So she moved around quite a bit and all the places are in different corners of Bath. That's really interesting. I just said Jane moved around in Bath quite a bit. Yeah. Everything is, I mean, you can walk to these places, but... Still, it's in, one, one, I know. One, <laughs> now that was quite some walking today. And yesterday, but we enjoyed it. We always enjoy Bath so much and we hope you enjoy the video. Yeah. As always, thank you so much for watching and we'll see you again very soon. So, until next time. Bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.